Dapat na bahagi ang magdamagang pagdiriwang ng Pasko ng pagkabuhay ng Panginoon. Pagbabasbas ng apoy, salita ng Diyos, binyag, Eukaristiya. Babasbasan ang bagong apoy sa simula ng pagdiriwang at sisindihan ang kandilang pampaskwa na sasagisag kay Kristong ilaw. Pangungunahan ng kandilang pampaskwa ang pagpasok sa simbahan. Kung paanong ginabayan at pinangunahan ng haliging apoy ang bayan ng Israel sa paglalakbay patungong lupang pangako, si Jesus na liwanag ang gagabay sa bayang Diyos sa paglalakbay sa lupang pangako ng langit. Papuri sa Diyos sa kaitaasan. Aawitin muli ang papuri sa Diyos at aliluya matapos ang ilang linggong hindi ito inawit. Siyam ang pagbasa sa gabing ito. Tila sagot ito sa tanong ng batang hudyo sa hapunang pampaskwa. Anong kaibahan ng gabing ito sa lahat ng mga gabi? Ilalahad ang kasaysayan ng kaligtasan sa mga pagbasa. Para sa mga bibinyagan, paalala ito na sa binyag na tatanggapin nila, magiging bahagi sila ng kasaysayan ng kaligtasan. Pagkatapos ng bawat pagbasa at salmo, may panalangin pamumunuan ng pari na hihiling sa Diyos na kung paano siya kumilo sa nakaraan, kung paanong ipinamalas niya ang kanyang kagandahang loob at katapatan, ipamalas niya rin ito ngayon sa kanyang simbahan, lalo na sa mga bibinyagan. Gaganapin ang pagbibinyag ng mga magiging mga bagong kasapi ng sambayan ng Kristiyano. Sa binyag, Malalapat ang kanilang buhay sa kamatayan at muling pagkabuhay ni Jesus. Magiging kabahagi sila ng simbahan ang katawan ni Kristo. Kukumpilan din ang mga bininyagan upang pasimula ng pakikisalo nila sa misyon ng Mesiyas na magpahayag ng mabuting balita, humilom at magpalaya sa masasamang Espiritu. Sasariwain din ng mga binyagan ang mga pangako nila nang sila ay binyagan. Sabi nga ni San Ambrosio, kakapit tayo sa mga pako ng krus ni Kristo upang hindi tayo maagaw ng pagsilo ng demonyo. Tatanggapin ng mga bagong binyag ang katawan at dugo ni Kristo sa komunyon. Ang muling nabuhay ni Jesus ang mag-aanyaya sa atin sa hapag ng kanyang katawan at dugo. Matapos nating marinig muli ang kwento ni Jesus at maipagdiwang ang pagpapakasakit, kamatayan at muling pagkabuhay ni Jesus, hubugin nawa tayo ng kwento ni Jesus upang isang araw ay masabi natin katulad ni San Pablo, hindi na ako ang nabubuhay kundi si Kristo ang nabubuhay sa akin. TV Maria, the Filipino Catholic TV channel. We have the story. We have the heart and the passion. We just have to be where the people are. TV Maria, leading you to the fullness of life. Before the Mass, prepare yourselves well for it. Do not watch it with a cup of coffee in hand. 
Read the Mass readings to prepare yourselves. Think what you are to thank the Lord for and what to offer to Him this Mass. Remember, you are praying this Eucharist with many other fellow Catholics. During the Mass, stay in reverent gesture throughout the Mass. Pray with the whole family. Join in prayers, response, and singing. At the time of communion, make a spiritual communion. After the Mass, take some moments of silence to read again the scriptural readings and reflect. My dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity on this way, listening to His word, and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that these Paschal celebrations, by these Paschal celebrations, we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure, we may attain festivities of an ending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning, the Alpha, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to Him. And all ages, to Him be glory and power through every age and forever. 
Amen. By His holy and glorious wounds. May Christ the Lord Guard us and protect us. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Lumen Christi
Lumen Christi. Salvation is won. Rejoice, you heavenly powers, sing hearts of angels, heaven exalt. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen, from death is now, salvation is won. Rejoice. O earth, in a shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. For Christ has conquered, glory fills you, darkness vanishes forever. 
Rejoice, O Mother Church, exalt in glory. The risen one shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. Up your hearts, we lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Let us praise the unseen God the all-powerful Father and His only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For Christ has ransomed us with His blood, paid to the Father the price of Adam's sin. This is our Passover feast. When Christ the Lamb is slain, in His blood He consecrates the homes of all believers. Rejoice, you heavenly powers, sing hearts of angels, heaven is Jesus Christ, our King, is risen, trumpet to sound, salvation is born. This is the night when you saved our fathers, the people of Israel. You freed them from their slavery and let them dry shod through the sea. This is the night when Christians are washed clean of sin and freed from all defilement. We are then restored to grace and grow together in holiness. This is the night when Jesus Christ broke the chains of death and rose triumphant from the grave. Father, how wonderful your care for us, how boundless your merciful love, just to ransom a slave, you gave away your son, O oh, happy fault, O oh, happy fault, O oh, necessary sin of Adam, which gained for us a Redeemer. The power of this holy night 
dispel us all evil, wash us guilt away, restore us lost innocence, bring mourners joy. Night truly blessed, for heaven is wedded to earth, and then man is reconciled, reconciled with God. Rejoice, you heavenly powers, sing bars of angels, heaven exalt. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen, trumpets is sound. Therefore, Holy Father, in the joy of this night, receive our evening sacrifice of praise, your church's solemn offering. Accept this Easter candle, may it dispel the darkness of this night. May the morning star that never sets find this flame still burning. Christ the morning star who came back from the dead and shed his peaceful light on all humanity. Your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Rejoice to heaven Heaven exalt, Jesus Christ, our King is risen, trumpets in sound, salvation is Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God, in times past, saved His people, and in this, the last days, has sent us His Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Please be seated. Kindly put off the light of your candle. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God 
called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus, evening came and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky, to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days, and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night, and he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, 
the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day, God was finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. You are clothed with majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. You fix the earth upon its foundation, not to be moved forever. With the ocean, as with a garment, you covered it. Above the mountains, the waters stood. You send forth springs into the water courses that wind among the mountains. Beside them, the birds of heaven dwell. From among the branches, they send forth their song. You water the mountains from your palace. The earth is replete with the fruit of your works. You raise grass for the cattle and vegetation for man's use, producing bread from the earth. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have wrought them all. 
the earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the Holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, Both of you stay here with the donkey, while the boy and I go on over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon, Abraham took the wood for the holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued. Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its thorns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram 
and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yireh. Hence, people now say, On the mountain the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did, in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham father of nations, as once you swore, grant we pray that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea into two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. 
Then I will receive glory to Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I receive glory to Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God who had been leading Israel's camp now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to the right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fairy cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea. When the Lord hurled them into its midst, as the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped, but the Israelites had marched on dry land to the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to the right and to the left. Does the Lord save Israel on that day? from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord, they feared the Lord and believed in Him and His servant Moses. Then Moses and Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for he is gloriously triumphant, horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I will sing to the Lord, for He is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot He has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. He is my God, I praise Him. The God of my Father, I extol Him. The Lord is a warrior, Lord is His name. Peros, chariots, and army He hurled into the sea. The elite of His officers were submerged in the Red Sea. The flood waters covered them. They sunk into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, magnificent in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has shattered the enemy. You brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seat, O Lord, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the New Testament has unlocked the meaning of wonders worked in former times, so that the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font and the nation delivered from slavery foreshadows the Christian people, grant, we pray, that all nations obtaining the privilege of Israel by merit of faith, may be reborn by partaking of your Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife married in youth and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you, but with great tenderness, I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath, for a moment, I hid my face from you, but with enduring love, I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah will never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. 
Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord who has mercy on you. O afflicted one, storm-battered and unconsoled, I lay my pavements in carnelians and your foundations in sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of carbon kels, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In justice shall you be established, far from the fear of oppression, where destruction cannot come near you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me clear, and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. Praise to the Lord, you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime, his good will. At nightfall, weeping enters in, but with the dawn, rejoicing. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You change my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, forever I will give you thanks. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledged to the patriarchs by reason of their faith, and through sacred adoption, increase the children of your promise, so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass. Your church may now see in great in great part fulfilled through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. 
Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? Your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens, the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My Savior, I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. With joy, you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. to the Lord, acclaim His name. Among the nations, make known His deeds. Proclaim how exalted is His name. Praise 
to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the netherworld? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Had you walked in the way of God, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding, that you may know also where are length of days and life where light of the eyes and peace, who has found the place of wisdom, who has entered into her treasuries, the one who knows all things, know her. He has proved her by his knowledge, the one who established the earth for all time and filled it with four-footed beasts, he who dismisses the light and it departs, calls it, and it obeys him trembling, before whom the stars at their post shine and rejoice. When he calls them, they answer, Here we are, shining with joy for their Maker. Such is our God. No other is to be compared to Him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant, to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God, the law that endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those who will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light toward splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us.
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Let us pray. O God, who constantly increase your church by your call to the nations, graciously grant to those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel live in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name because it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, Say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. 
I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose meads you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols, I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God, amid loud cries of joy and thanksgiving with the multitude keeping festival. Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. Then will I go into the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the heart, O God, my God. Let us pray. O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole Church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation which you planned from all eternity. 
may the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by Him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
Let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through the baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. Most Reverend Father, I bring you a message of great joy, the message of Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
Please be seated. Give thanks to the Lord for His good, for His mercy and doors for
When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Solomon, bought spices to that they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, Who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they look up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold, the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, He is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing. Your Excellency, Most Reverend Charles John Brown, Apostolic Nuncio sa Pilipinas, Reverend Monsignor Roli de la Cruz, ang ating minamahal na Rektor, mga kapatid na pari at diakono, mga madre, mga minamahal kong kapatid kay Kristo. Ngayong gabi, tayo ay natitipon sa Manila Cathedral upang ipagdiwang ang pagkabuhay muli ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Binabalik-balikan natin ang araw ng kagalakan kung kailan bumangon si Kristo mula sa mga patay, nagtagumpay, laban sa kasalanan at kamatayan at nagdulot ng bagong buhay sa lahat ng naniniwala sa Kanya. Tanggapin natin ang paanyayang ito sa atin, ang pumunta sa Galilea, kung saan makakatagpo natin sa si Yesus na muling nabuhay. Ano bang ang ibig sabihin ng pagpunta sa Galilea? Sabi ni Pope Francis, ang pagpunta sa Galilea ay pagsisimulang muli. Para sa mga alagad, ito ay pag-uwi sa lugar kung saan sa unang pagkakataon kanilang nakatagpo si Jesus at tinawag silang sumunod sa Kanya. Ang Galilea, ang lugar ng unang pagtatagpuan, unang pag-iibigan. Tila sinasabi ni Jesus sa mga lagad, Balikan natin ulit 
yung sinimulan natin. Magsimula tayong muli. Gusto kong sariwain ang pagsasama natin sa kabila ng lahat ng mga pagkakamali. Sa Galilea, mamamangha tayo sa walang hanggang pagmamahal ng Panginoon na kayang lumikha ng bagong landas kahit sa mga daan kung saan binigo natin siya. Kaya nga, ang pagpunta sa Galilea at pagtahak ng bagong landas sa direksyon papalayo sa libingan. Sa banal na gabi na ito, ipinagdiriwang din natin ang sakramento ng binyag. Kung kailan ang bawat kristyano ay nakikilahok sa kamatayan at muling pagkabuhay ni Jesus. Sa binyag na mamatay tayo sa ating lumang sarili at nabubuhay tayo kasama si Kristo sa bagong buhay. Sa pagsaksi natin sa binyag ng ating mga kapatid sa pananampalataya ngayong gabi, Tandaan natin ang kahalagahan ng sakramentong ito sa ating buhay. Ang binyag ay hindi lamang isang ritual o tradisyon. Ito ay isang personal na pangako na mamuhay tayo bilang tagasunod ni Kristo. Ito ay isang pangpublikong pagpapahayag na pumipili tayo na maging bahagi ng komunidad ng pananampalataya at handang maglakbay sa pananampalataya kasama ang ating mga kapatid kay Kristo. Sa pamamagitan ng binyag, tayo ay sumasama sa katawan ni Kristo at naging mga miyembro ng kanyang simbahan. At habang tinutunghayan natin ang liwanag ng kandila ng Paskwa, ipinapaalaral rin sa atin ang kapangyarihan ng liwanag ni Kristo. Ito ay nagpapakita ng tagumpay ng buhay sa kamatayan at ito ay naglilingkod bilang sagisag ng pag-asa at pagbabago para sa ating lahat. Sa pamamagitan ng binyag, tayo ay nagkakaisa kay Kristo sa kanyang kamatayan at muling pagkabuhay. At tayo ay tinatawag na makibahagi sa kanyang misyon upang magdala ng liwanag sa mundo. Habang patuloy tayong maglakbay sa ating pananampalataya, laging tandaan ang kahalagahan ng pagtutulungan sa espiritu ng sinudality at huwag nating kalimutan ang liwanag ni Kristo na nag-uudyok sa atin sa ating mga landas. Bilang isang komunidad ng pananampalataya, tayo ay tinatawag na tumugon sa pagkabuhay ni Kristo sa pamamagitan ng pagmamahal at debosyon. Tinatawag tayo na magbahagi ng mabuting balita ng tagumpay ni Kristo sa kasalanan at kamatayan sa ating mundo. Tinatawag tayo na maging mga saksi sa biyaya at awa ng Diyos at ipakita ang biyaya at awa na iyon sa iba. 
sa ating pagdiriwang ngayong gabi ng pagkabuhay ni Kristo. Magbalik na tayo sa ating pangako sa Kanya at sa Kanyang simbahan. Alalahanin natin ang mga pangako natin sa ating binyag at ipakita natin ito sa araw-araw nating buhay. Tayo nawa ay maging komunidad na namumuhay sa pagmamahal at nagtutulungan sa pananampalataya. Sabi pa ni Pope Francis, Kapatid, kung sa gabing ito may dala ka sa puso mo na isang madilim na oras, isang araw na hindi nagbubukang liwayway, isang liwanag na nakabaon, isang gumuhong pangarap, halika, buksan mo ang puso mo para mamangha sa balita ng Pasko. Huwag kang matakot, buhay siya, hinihintay ka niya sa Galilea. Hindi mabibigo ang mga hangarin mo, mapapawi ang mga luha mo, madadaig ng pag-asa ang mga takot mo. Dahil kung alam mo lang sana, ang Panginoon ay laging nauuna sa atin. Naglalakad siya sa harap mo at kasama niya nag-uumpisa ulit ang buhay. Mga kapatid, naway maging paalala sa atin ang gabi ng Pasko ng pagkabuhay, ng kapangyarihan ng pagkabuhay ni Kristo at ang kahalagahan ng, at, ng ating pakikibahagi sa kanyang simbahan. Lumabas tayo mula sa banal na gabi na ito, punong-puno ng kagalakan at pag-asa, at maging tanglaw ng liwanag ni Kristo sa mundong ating ginagalawan. Amen. Please all stand. Dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of this our brothers and sisters in their blessed hope so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, 
saints perpetua and felicity. Almighty, ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism, so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters 
so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, by the outpouring of the flood, foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of the one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people, set free from slavery to Pharaoh, would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, Go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water received by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old, may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font. So that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. Rogelio, I baptize you in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Emma, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Rogelio and Emma, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourselves in Christ. Receive this baptismal garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Amen. Good parents, please come forward to give to the newly baptized the light of Christ. You have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as children of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. My dear newly baptized, born again in Christ by baptism, you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon His apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit which you are to receive will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to His suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the Church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. My dear friends, let us pray to God our Father that He will pour out the Holy Spirit on this newly baptized to strengthen them with His gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them 
to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence, through Christ our Lord. Rogelio, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, amen. Peace be with you. And, and with your spirit. Emma, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. With your spirit. Let us all welcome our newly baptized brother and sister with a warm of applause. Please all stand. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty, prom and all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Brothers and sisters, filled with paschal joy, 
Let us offer our prayers to God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Full of trust in his power and love, let us say, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the people of God, that the mystery of the resurrection resonate throughout the whole world through the genuine witnessing of Christians in their offering of themselves in the service for the life of those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. For our new brothers and sisters in Christ, that they may live out to their baptismal promises, preserve themselves in the grace of God, and be active members of the Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. For the whole world, that human society may cultivate a culture of life and sharing, and so uplift those who are dying of poverty, oppression, and war, so that the world may truly know that peace that Christ's resurrection brings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. For our brothers and sisters who are suffering, that their sorrow may be changed into joy, their grief be turned into rejoicing, and their seeming death be transformed into the fullness of life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For our Christian community, that it may bear witness to the mystery of the resurrection of the Lord, and help make this mystery real in the lives of all its members, and especially in the lives of those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For ourselves, that as we renew our baptismal promises, we may better live out our Christian faith in our thoughts, words, and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. All-powerful God and Father, you raised your Son from the dead as a promise and foretaste of what is to come to your people. Hear the prayers of the people your Son has gained for you, and grant us your grace and new life in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. You may now put off the light of your candles.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may by the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. all stand. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am Lord. not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song, said St. John Paul II, paraphrasing St. Augustine. My dear brothers and sisters, friends of the Manila Cathedral, before the Cardinal gives the final blessing to end this wonderful Easter Vigil celebration, I would like to thank the many people who made sure that our Holy Week celebrations this year at the Mother Church would run smoothly. But instead of clapping, since the issue of clapping within the Mass has become a controversial issue lately, to clap or not to clap, we will tonight say Alleluia once I raise my hand. Alleluia means praise the Lord. We praise God for this wonderful people. So let us practice. Let us thank the following. Cardinal Joe for presiding over the Palm Sunday Mass and the Easter Triduum. He is also celebrating his 72nd birthday today. We thank the Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Charles Brown, who joins our celebrations here at the Cathedral whenever his busy schedule permits. Hallelujah. Father Biel, our Vice Rector. Father Paul and other MCs, priests, concelebrants, and confessors, priests who shared during the Siete Palabras. Deacons and seminarians of the Archdiocese who served during this Easter Triduum, the Archdiocese and Liturgical Commission and the Chancery staff, Gayak de Manila for the beautiful arrangement of flowers, the different owners of images of the saints which were used during the exhibit and Holy Week celebrations, the cathedral servants and volunteers the choir, the lay ministers of the Holy Eucharist, the greeters and collectors, the lectors and commentators, and the altar servers, the cathedral staff, the security guards, the maintenance personnel, the intramuros administration, the police, the Philippine Red Cross, taxpayer Philippine volunteers, and to all of you, who came from all over to celebrate with us in spite of the heat and traffic and those who watch us and our live streaming in their homes, especially the elders, elderly and the sick. 
So maraming maraming salama, salamat po sa inyong lahat. Alleluia, alleluia. Please all stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in His compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may He who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of His only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go and be witnesses to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia.
Manalangin tayo. O Diyos, na sa pamamagitan ng muling pagkabuhay ng iyong anak, na sa Heso Kristong Panginoon namin, ay minarapat mong paligayahin ang mundo. Hinihiling namin sa iyo na alang-alang sa Birheng Maria na kanyang ina ay makamta namin ang kaligayahan sa buhay na walang hanggan. Sa pamamagitan din ni Kristong Panginoon namin. Amen. Amen. Luwalhati sama sa anak at sa Espiritu Santo. Kapara noong unang-una, ngayon magpakailanman at magpasawalang hanggan. Amen. Luwalhati sama sa anak at sa Espiritu Santo. Kapara noong unang-una, ngayon magpakailanman at magpasawalang hanggan. Amen. Luwalhati sama sa anak at sa Espiritu Santo. Kapara noong unang-una, ngayon magpakailanman at magpasawalang hanggan. Amen.